Hey there students, in this clip we're going to be going over two examples on how to um, graph circles that are presented in general form and also how to state the domain and range um, of our resulting graphs, okay? All right, so um, the task for questions one and two, um, we are to express the given equation of circles in standard form. Uh, we're going to find the properties, graph, label the resulting graph completely and then state the domain and range, all right? So for question number one, we have um, a circle, x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 4y minus 8 equals 0. All right, if we look at this equation, we can tell that it's a circle because the coefficients of the squares are the same. We have a plus between the squares. Um, and that's the, and then we have two squares. Okay, so two squares, the same coefficient and the plus tells us that this is the equation of a circle. All right, but what form is this? This is known as the general form. Okay, the general form of the equation of a circle. So the first task is to express this in standard form. Okay, so what we're going to do first is organize our variables. We're going to put the x's together in your own nice little world on the left side and the y's together on. Um, in your own little area on the left side of the equation. And then we're going to move the constant, which is neither an x nor y, to the other side of the equation. All right, so let's go ahead and organize our variables. We have x squared uh, minus 4x. This makes our x row. And then plus y squared minus 4y. That makes our y row right here. And then uh, this negative 8 is neither an x nor y. So what we'll do is add 8 to both sides to move it over. Okay? So equals positive 8. Now we're going to partition uh, both variables to make it clear what uh, variable lies where. So to the left side, we have the x world. To the right side, we have the y world. All right. This is an incomplete square, and this is an incomplete square. So what we're going to do is we want to create two perfect squared trinomials that we can factor. Okay. So how do we create two perfect squared trinomials? Remember, to complete the square, you always add b over 2 square that completes the square all right so let's um set this up to complete the square first of question we want to ask ourselves is is this expression ready to complete the square the answer is absolutely because the square has no coefficient if you had a coefficient then we have to factor that out first how about in the y case can we start the completion of the square here certainly because we have no uh, coefficient or a coefficient of one for the y squared. Okay? All right, so they cannot have any number other than one as your coefficients, the squares before you complete the square. All right, now let's uh, set it up. So we're going to have x squared minus 4x plus a certain value that when I add, this becomes a perfect square trinomial. All right? And then the y, y will be a y squared minus 4y plus another value which makes my y area of a perfect square trinomial also, okay? Now, on the right side of the equation, since I added two numbers to the left side to preserve equality, I also have to add two numbers, identical numbers that I added to the left side, I have to add it on the right side to preserve equality, okay? All right, so let's complete the square in the x world. In the x world, to complete the square, I need to find what b of x is first, okay? So what is b of x? In the x world, a of x, is 1, coefficient of x squared, p of x is uh, negative 4, and c of x is what we need to have a perfect square trinomial, okay? All right, so b of x in the x world is negative 4. So what do we do with that? The formula is you divide it by 2, which gives you, uh, what does that give you? Negative 2, and then you square it. When you square it, you get 4, okay? So b, over two, b of x over 2 squared is 4, and that completes the square in the x world. So we're going to add a 4 here, and then we're going to have a 4 here, okay? Now, in the y world, um, b of y, what is the b in the y world? Well, this is a in the y world is positive 1, b of y in the y world is negative 4, and then c of y in the y world is the term we need in order to have a perfect square trinomial in the y world, okay? So how do we find that last term that makes this a perfect square trinomial? We'll do b over 2 square again, okay? So b of y is negative 4, as we can clearly see here. 
what do we do with that? We we'll divide it by 2, which gives you negative 2, and then you square it. Negative 2 squared is 4. So if I insert a 4 here, I have a perfect square trinomial, and then I also have to insert a 4 here to preserve equality. Okay? All right. Now, how do you factor this construct right here? This is a perfect square trinomial. How do we factor it? We square the first term and the last term, and then we'll bring down the middle sign. That's a shortcut. That's the beauty of having the perfect square trinomial. So this is now x minus 2 quantity square. Okay? All right, we're going to do the same thing for the, uh, for the y world. How do you factor this perfect square trinomial we have right here? The same procedure. You square the first and the last term, bring down the middle sign, okay? So you square with the first term and the last term, and then you bring down the middle sign. So we're going to have quantity, so plus quantity y minus 2 square, okay? Now we combine all these uh, numbers together, 8 plus 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 8, which is 16. All right, so this right here is our standard form. Okay, let me rewrite it down here so that you can clearly see what it is. x minus 2 square plus y minus 2 square equals 16. This is my uh, standard form. Okay? The beauty of this form is it is easy to determine your center and radius, which enables us to graph. Okay? All right, so let's find our center and radius. So our center, how do you get your center? You get it by taking the opposite of the numbers next to each variable. Okay, so minus 2, the opposite of that is 2, and then minus 2, the opposite of that is 2. To get the radius, you take the square root of the last number, which is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. So that means that you're going to be going 4 units in all directions, to the right, to the left, up and down from the center. Okay, you're supposed, technically you're supposed to go in all directions, but up, down, left, right will suffice. All right. Now let's sketch the graph of our circle. So the question is, what quadrant does 2 and 2 lie in? Quadrant 1, 2, 3, or 4, what quadrant does it lie in? 2 and 2 involves going to the right and going up, so that takes us to quadrant 1. Okay. So we're going to make our quadrant 1 sufficiently large to compensate for the shift in the center. Something like that. Okay, let's go ahead and set up our coordinate system and label our axis. This is our y, and this is our x. Now the center is 2, 2. So let's go ahead and graph that 1, 2, 1, 2. So that's 2 and 2. So that goes the center. Now we're going to use uh, the radius to graph four more points. So we're going to go north, south, east, west, four units. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 to the north, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 south. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 to the east, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 to the west. All right, so these points define our circle. All right, let's go ahead and uh, draw the graph of our circle as best as we can. So, that goes the circle. All right. Now, let's label our circle and then... Um, write down the domain and range. Okay, so first thing we're going to label is the radius. So any point from the center to the circumference of the circle. So this right here is your radius. And the length of our radius is uh, 4 units. And then this, this point right here is our center. So our center is um, 2 comma 2. All right. Now let's take the domain and the range of our circle. Let's start with the domain. The domain is the um, leftmost point and the rightmost point of the graph projected on the x-axis. Okay. So if I take this point, this leftmost point, and I project it to the x-axis, what is that value going to be? And then if I project this point, the rightmost point, to the x-axis, what's that going to be? Remember, your domain is the uh, horizontal span of your graph. So you're looking at the x-axis projection of the graph uh, on the axis, okay? So if I go here, I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to start from negative 4. Negative 4 is less than or equal to y. I'm sorry, x, because we're going along the x-axis. Less than or equal to x. 
and then the rightmost point is that point right there so we're going to count one two three four five six all the way to positive six okay this is inequality notation in interval notation you can write this as bracket negative four comma six all right now how about the range let's figure out what the range is the range is the highest point and the lowest point projected on the y-axis okay so how low does this graph go this is the lowest point right here one two negative two and the highest point projected on the y-axis is one two three four five six six two okay so negative two all the way to six so let's write that using inequality notation first so it's going to be from negative two less than we put a y in this case since remember the range is along the y-axis okay let me indicate that there the range is on the x is on, is on the y and the domain is on the x okay so let's not put y y is less than or equal to the highest point on the graph projected on the y is six all right using a interval notation this can be written as negative two comma six and there goes your domain um, and range for the the graph all right, let's take a look at um, question number two. So for question two, we have the equation x squared plus y squared plus 2x minus 4y minus 4 equals 0. Okay, so what I'd like you to do, you can um, take a look at how you want to organize the variables okay so we need uh two worlds the x world and y world with two imperfect uh two incomplete squares and then we'll complete those squares okay so first step is to uh organize our variables okay so we'll put the x's next to each other x squared plus 2x and then the y's next to each other y squared minus 4y and then this number is a constant is neither an x nor a y so we're going to add four to both sides at four at four uh, so this is uh, equals four okay now let's partition the variables down the center to have a clear delineation between our two uh, variable worlds um, so we have two uh, incomplete squares so we need to set them out to complete the square all right so uh, the next question we're going to ask ourselves is um, am I ready to complete or are we ready to complete the squares here so you look at the coefficient of the squares. If they're one, that means you're ready. That's the case here. So we're ready to complete the square, okay? So let's get them prepped. We have x squared plus two x. I'm gonna add a term here to make this into a perfect square trinomial. And in the y world, same uh, process, y squared minus four y plus another term so that I can have a perfect square trinomial here. Since I introduced two terms to the left side, I'm going to have to introduce two terms to the right side to preserve equality, all right? Okay, so in my x world, um, this is my a of x and a b of x. And then the c of x is what I'm looking for here. Okay, in the y world, this is a of y, uh, this is b of y, and this is c of y. Okay, so let's start with the x world. So for the x world, b of x is what? What is b of x? b of x is 2. So what do we do with that? Remember, to complete the square, you add b over 2 square. Okay? So let's do that here. Um, we have b of x already, so we're going to do b of, of x over 2, which is 1. And we also have to square it, right? So to square it, to square the 1 that we got, we just square 1, which is 1. All right, so we're going to insert that 1 here. That has a c of x that makes this a perfect square trinomial. And we'll insert a 1 here also to preserve equality. Now in the y world, b of y is, what is b of y? b of y is negative 4, so what do we do with this? Same process, divided by 2, which is negative 2, and we're going to square it, right? Remember, b over 2 square completes the square. So I'm going to add a 4 here to have a perfect square trinomial, and then to preserve equality, I also have to add a 4 um, on the right side. Okay, now let's uh, factor this. What is this? This is a perfect square trinomial in the x world. So to factor that, you root the first and last term and bring down the middle sign, okay? So the factored form is going to be x plus 1 quantity squared. 
I can bring down the plus, the same procedure on the right side of the y world. This is already a perfect square trinomial. So to factor that, uh, we're going to root the first and the last, and then uh, bring down the middle sign. Okay, so that's going to yield uh, y minus 2 quantity square. Okay, 4 plus 1 plus 4 is 9. So this is our standard form. All right, so let's indicate the form. This original form we had is a general form. And then this form we have just created or transformed the general form into is known as a standard form. Okay. Now with the standard form, we can easily determine the properties of the circle. The center is what you get the HK opposite of the numbers next to each variable. The X coordinate is negative one opposite of positive one. And the K is negative is positive two opposite of negative two. Okay. The radius is what you get when you take the square root of the last number, square root of nine is three. So what you do with that three is you're going to go three units in all directions from the center. Okay, three units in all directions. All right, let's go ahead and generate the graph label it and then see the domain and range of our resulting um, graph, okay? All right, so let's look at the center. The center is negative one, two. Now what quadrant does negative one, two lie? In order to get to the center, the new, the new center, we're going to go to the left one and down two, so that takes us to quadrant number, um, I'm sorry, we're going to go left one and up two, so that takes us to quadrant number uh, two. All right, so we're going to make quadrant two sufficiently large to compensate for the, the movement or the shifts. All right, so let's graph the center by labeling the axis first and then calibrating. So this is a y-axis. So x-axis, um, let's see, we're going to go to the right, 1, and we're going to go up 1, 2. So there goes our center, uh, 2, comma 1, all right? Should just axis right a little bit. Okay, there you go. Now, uh, let's grab the points on the circle. We just need only four. Uh, we're going to go north, three points, 1, 2, 3. And then we're going to go south, 3, 1, 2, 3. East, 3, 1, 2, 3. And then to the west, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and graph our circle, our circle as best as we can. So let's go ahead and graph a circle here. All right, so there you have it. Now we're going to label and then graph. Okay, so let's label the radius first. So if you go from the center to the extremity, that point, uh, that segment uh, is called the radius. Okay, so this is the radius. And um, the value, the length of our radius is uh, three units. All right. Okay. Next thing we want to label is our center. So this point right here is your center. And the coordinates of our center is uh, negative one, two. All right. Now let's find our domain and range. Let's start with the domain first. Domain is a projection of the left and rightmost points onto the x axis, so the horizontal span. So the leftmost point of our circle is this value, x value right here. The rightmost point is this x value right here. All right, so our domain is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4 has less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to 2 using inequality notation, interval notation, bracket negative 4, comma 2. All right, and then our range is going to be the uh, vert vertical span of our graph, the lowest points to the highest point projected on our y-axis. So the lowest point is negative 1, and the highest point is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So negative 1 all the way to 5. So we have negative 1 less than or equal to y, y less than or equal to 5, or in interval notation, negative 1 comma 5. All right, so uh, there you have it. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. And uh, you can also comment, like, or share this video with your um, whichever social networking program you use. Okay, more math videos can be found on mac.serve.com. Uh, or you can just scan this QR code for direct access. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.